This is the Rolls-Royce Phantom Drophead Coupe. This car is pretty much everything you would expect from a convertible that costs half a million dollars. It's really big, it's really powerful, and it's really luxurious. In fact, it's one of the best riding cars that we've ever driven here at Car and Driver. But there are a few things about this car that you might not expect. You might not expect just how big it really is. This car is so big that it even makes a tall guy like me look pretty short. I'm almost six foot two, but standing next to this car, you might think I was about five feet tall. This car is not just big. It's got a lot of really unique features that you don't find on any other car. This particular Phantom Drophead Coupe has a couple of really cool trim options. One is this two-tone hood. That's not silver paint. It may be hard to tell in the video and in photos. That's actually raw stainless steel just treated with a plastic uh, coating to keep it nice. But what you're seeing there is true brushed stainless steel. You can see that solid metal there. You really know that it's solid when you try and shut it. It takes a pretty darn firm uh, slam. I haven't experienced that since a 1978 Volvo 240. It's got a teak wood deck, the same kind of teak used in a really nice yacht. And this little swath of wood here that surrounds the deck and the top of the instrument cluster costs thousands of dollars. The hood ornament, known as the Spirit of Ecstasy, the Flying Lady, is shared with the Phantom Sedan. And it's engineered so it's pretty hard to steal. You'll notice that, let's say I was some kind of miscreant trying to steal it, I wiggle it. It falls back down into the car automatically to protect it. And if you see trouble coming, all you have to do is hit a button and the Flying Lady is safe. The other sure sign to the masses that you're driving something special are the double R logos on the wheels. And as in the Phantom sedan, they stay level even when you're driving. The Phantom Drophead Coupe features what are called suicide doors. They're called that because in theory you could rip the door open while you were driving, barrel roll out of the car and kill yourself. If I had this car, I don't think I'd be trying to kill myself. They look pretty cool. The best part about it is that because it would be pretty hard to reach back and close that door, especially if you're of the age group that typically buys this car, they've equipped it with an automatic closing feature. You simply touch a button and the door closes itself. It's a pretty neat trick. The Phantom shares some of its electrical subsystems with the previous generation BMW 7 Series. That means it has the not great iDrive system. But the system has been improved in the Phantom. You can close the screen and see nothing but a beautiful clock. Like the Phantom sedan, the Drophead Coupe also has little umbrellas in the door jams. And it's got a drying system, so even if you put it in wet, it won't get all mildewy and gross. For absolutely no reason at all, the trunk not only opens up, but in case you have uh, a bigger load, you can also open it down like this. This is the first convertible that comes to mind that has this kind of frippery. It's kind of funny because the trunk, once you open it, isn't that big, but I guess if you can do it, you do if you're Rolls Royce. If there's one thing that makes the experience of driving a Phantom really unique, it's this gigantic thin rim steering wheel. There's really nothing else like it on a car today. Look through the steering wheel at the power reserve gauge, floor the gas and watch it go down to about 10% right before it shifts, and you'll know you're driving a thoroughly modern vehicle. If there's one downside to this car, it's that it's so big and so fabulous that it has a tendency to make the driver look a little bit small behind the wheel. I guess that's why the rich don't have to die it. Pardon me, would you have any Grey Poupon? But of course. 